Meanwhile, California Governor Gavin Newsom taking aim at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis now for flying illegal migrants to Sacramento. Here he is in an exclusive interview with Fox News with Sean Hannity last night. Watch. Because they landed in your sanctuary yeah. state, you're going to take care of them. They should be happy. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the car. I mean, come on. This is California. I know it's California. Okay. I'm, I'm it's aware the, where I it's am. The, on this way, the fourth largest economy in the world. We can handle of course all you of this. Okay, I'm a border state. Ron DeSantis is not. I know he's desperate to get in on the action. No, he needs I don't have a crystal attention, ball. And he set this up months ago by doing an RFP. I have the contractors okay. My question that he tried is, to hire saying he was going to send people to California. This is a stunt. It's embarrassing. It's, it's not, pathetic. Joining me right now is former acting DHS secretary, executive director at the America First Policy Institute, Chad Wolf, back with us. Chad, great to have you. Thanks very much for being here. So there was no conversation, I guess, from Gavin Newsom's part on the fact that Joe Biden started this. He was the one who was busing and flying migrants in the dead of night uh, to cities across the country. The New York Post busted him when they had cameras at the uh, the Westchester private airport when he used private flights to, to, to fly people to Westchester. Gavin Newsom's upset with Ron DeSantis, though. Well, it's such a great point. I think uh, not only has the administration been doing this, but, you know, you have governors like Ron DeSantis and Governor Abbott in Texas that, that are having to do this out of necessity. We've been in this crisis now for over two years, and they're at capacity in these border states. And making sure that uh, these migrants are cared for, you're going to have to move them to other places around this country, into sanctuary cities like places in California, like Sacramento, and other places in, in California. It's what they um, advertise for. It's it's why they've passed laws to protect these types of individuals. And so the fact that they are being bused to places like New York City or California should not be a surprise to these governors, to these mayors that that are there. This is what they've advocated for, and this is what they have wanted. And you've got Governor Abbott, like I said, having to do this out of necessity. There are no more shelters in the state of Texas. There are no more facilities in the state of Texas. They have been overrun, and they've been overrun for well over a year now. Well, what is the situation now? There was a lot of conversation before Title 42 went away, that things would collapse, and we've had, you know, swarms of people coming in. How would you assess the wide-open border today? Well, the border has, has basically, uh, I wouldn't say stabilized, but the numbers remain extremely high. What we didn't see were the, the 12,000 or 13,000 a day apprehensions that were predicted. But instead, you remain at five, six, seven thousand 7,000 illegal apprehensions per day, and it's just astronomically high. That somehow that is the new normal is, is crazy. It should not anywhere be anywhere close to that high. But what the administration has also done is they basically moved these individuals from between ports of entry, so from the desert to the ports of entry. They're paroling them in. They're using the CBP-1 app. And all of these numbers that they that they push through at a port of entry no longer shows up on those monthly apprehension um, charts. And so the administration is claiming victory. There is no victory here. The demand is the same. The numbers are the same. They're just moving them into the country differently and counting them differently as well. Wow. Wow. The Biden administration is reportedly halting appointments booked on the CBP-1 asylum app for border crossings in Laredo, Texas, after warnings that migrants were being targeted for extortion, some telling the Associated Press that Mexican officials across the border, quote, threatened to hold them and make them miss their scheduled asylum appointments, Chad, unless they paid them. I mean, obviously, this is no surprise. You've been talking about how these people are getting, uh, you know, shaken down every day, if not worse. Well, that's exactly right. You've advertised this. You basically said you don't need the cartels. Use the CBP-1 app. Uh, but there's also many loopholes, right? If you can't access the CBP-1 app or they take it down, as, as you just indicated, then you're exempt from many of the rules that bar your entry into the country. And so individuals are showing up uh, at ports of entry saying, I can't access the app. And again, DHS, Biden's DHS is letting them into the country under parole, which is not asylum, which pr provides you no asylum protections whatsoever under U.S. law. So it's a, it's a shell game that they're doing at the moment. And I think they're doing that because they know they have this crisis that continues, uh, but they want to be able to say that they're doing something. And these are unlawful paths that they're doing. They're being challenged in court every single day. Um, and we're waiting to see the results of that. Wow. Meanwhile, ICE officials in Philadelphia deporting a confirmed MS-13 gang member 
who's wanted in El Salvador for murder, Chad. We don't know who's coming in here well, uh, uh, unless we find that they're a mass of terrorists, and now this guy apparently being deported. Well, we see news like this all the time, and this is, this is what happens when you have unchecked and uncontrolled illegal immigration into the country. When you have 1.5 million gotaways over the last two years, you don't know who's there. You don't know if they are a public safety threat, such as an MS-13 gang member. You don't know if they're a national security threat. The idea is, is that you want to check individuals coming into the country so that you understand who's coming in. And with 1.5 million gotaways, you have no idea who that is. And so you're going to continue to see, unfortunately, continue to see stories like this throughout the country where uh, an illegal alien is committing some type of crime. And I think it's important to remember, every crime committed by an illegal alien is a preventable crime. It did not need to occur. You need stronger border security laws. You need to enforce those. And you need to bring deterrence and consequence back into the system. It just doesn't exist right now. Yeah. Liz Peek, jump in. So it, it seems to me uh, now we have a Republican-led House, and I think a lot of Republicans are frustrated that they're not doing anything about this border situation. Is there anything that can be done? Can the power of the purse be used to withhold funds, for example, going to blue cities that are, that are asking for help? I mean, what is the solution here? Well, I think there's a couple of things that the House has done. They passed H.R. 2, which is a Border Security Act, and they did that probably about three weeks, three or four weeks ago. So that's an important piece of legislation that's now in the Senate. We'll see where it goes in the Senate. You're exactly right. Appropriation season is, is upon us, and they're going to be looking at the Department of Homeland Security budget. And my guess is they're going to be cutting, they're going to be reducing programs, they're going to put strings on that money uh, going as well. And then I think the third piece is important oversight. I testified last week, I'm testifying again tomorrow uh, in the House of Representatives talking about the crisis, talking about a different way, a different solution on securing that border and making sure that we're holding individuals accountable that are, that are making these decisions, these bad policies and tearing down policies that have been proven effective, not only in the Trump administration, but in previous administrations as well. It's all been torn down, and they're trying to remake it anew. And in the process, they've caused the greatest crisis that we have ever seen on, along our southern border. Well, and you put the national security issues aside. There's also a, a major cost to all of this, Chad. What kind of benefits are these migrants getting? And how much is it? Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Again, as they come in, uh, they're given work permits about six months after they cross the border and released into American communities. And as they go into these American communities, if they have children, the children are going into public education systems, which is putting a strain on that. English is, is normally not their first language. Uh, the public health systems, a lot of these individuals don't have health care insurance. And so if they get sick, they'll go to emergency rooms. And you have to understand what that does to, to Americans and other folks that need those emergency services as well. And it goes on and on and on. And so it's not only those costs, but they do qualify for a certain amount of benefits as well. And so uh, this illegal immigration is not just the illegality of coming across that border, but it's also the cost to American communities. And thus far, we've seen about four and a half million individuals over the last two years released into American communities. Um, and these were individuals not planned for, and these are communities that don't have an increased budget but are having to deal with this. Yeah, not to mention the money that it's uh, requiring to house them in these hotels, which, of course, is happening on taxpayer dollars. Chad, good to get your take. Thanks very much. Chad Wolf on the wide open border this morning. We appreciate your time, sir.